This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, yeah, it's Alex, that's me, and it's the Ramble, that's our program, and it goes until midnight tonight from New York, New York. Hey, Steve Kravitz, how are you? How are you? Good, you woke me up, what's up? It, 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 oh, I'm sorry, uh, he's up there in Worcester, Massachusetts. <laughs> Boy, your hair, look at your hair. What's wrong with my hair? It's everywhere. It's like you're trying to pick up television on it, you know. No, don't, don't, no. Back to he's back to looking like the shadow from the pulp comics. Boy, your hair. You need a haircut, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. For, it's you know, too for, cold to get a haircut. For a Jew, you've got a lot of hair. I got a lot of hair. Yeah. yeah when you're Jewish, you either go like me, okay? Right. Or, you, or you're like him. I mean, I've known a lot of a lot of old Jews who have just their full shock of hair. Right, right. Uh, was your maternal grandfather full of hair? Do you remember? Maternal on my mother's side? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know. My mother was an orphan. Oh, really? Well, then her father had a lot of hair. Probably so. Yeah, yeah. Boy, that term orphan. Do we even use that anymore? I don't know of another word for it, do you? I don't Without know. Without parents? Yeah, but I but they it's not like people go and I'm an orphan. You know, like I, I look, I'm an orphan. Yeah, so am I. And you're an orphan. But I'm also 67. Yeah, but does that make us an orphan officially? Are we could we join the orphan club? No, no, because we didn't grow up. I think it means you grow up an orphan. Yeah, that you you lost your parents early in life. Right, very yeah. young. Yeah, but if you lose them in your sixties, you yeah, everybody does. That's just a cycle of life. You know the thing that's been bothering me lately. I have, you know I don't know how many years I've got left. I mean, who knows? I may live to be a hundred. I, I have no idea. My mother did. Right. So I have no idea. Uh, if I'm gonna have all these aches and pains up to a hundred, I'm I'm sorry. Let me go now. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, I uh, what was the, where was I? See, what happens is I start elaborating on what I was saying, and then I forget what I was saying. I have. No, you're talking about losing hair. Oh, yeah. I still don't remember what I was gonna say. <laughs> You were saying that Jews come in two kinds, oh. one with hair and one without hair. Uh, and one without hair, and then... Uh, 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 this is like, you remember, it was pot always did this to me. <laughs> you know, you'd, be, you'd have a thought, you'd have a memory, uh, and right. you're talking, and then you kind of embellish, and then you go, where was I? And then you have to go right. back and retrace all your steps, almost from birth, okay, of what you were talking about. Right, right, but, right. But... Anyway, I don't know what I was saying about hair, but anyway, I, at 83, blah, 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 blah. Ah, forget it. I may live to be 100, you said. Yeah, I may live to be 100. My mother did. My mother did. And then... And that's where you, that, that's where you, that was the end of the conversation. Yeah, because supposedly somewhere before that was the thought I was going for. And then, yeah, but I, I have no idea what, what it I, was. What I, what I have to do is I have to stop embellishing things that I say, because when I embellish them, I forget the original thought that led up to the embellishment. Yeah, that's not impossible. That's not possible that you'll stop embellishing. I wish we had bubbles in this conversation because he'd probably remember. Oh, he would definitely remember. And he's amazing. You know, I mean, I, I would mention, no, oh, I did. A, we did a show at the Fairmont Hotel. He says, oh, that was on December 19, blah, blah, blah. Right. He doesn't even think twice about it. It's all in his head. I don't know how, where, but how, how does that happen? You, He's Rain Man. Yeah, you and I can't remember yesterday, you know? 
Yeah, it was another 10 minutes ago. That's right. That's right. So anyway, you grew up in Wooster. I want to ask you about growing up in Wooster because I think uh, our lives as we get older are determined by where we grew up. I mean, I, by the life you had when you were growing up. Did you ever I get, had a great childhood. Yeah, you know something? I was thinking about that yesterday. Somebody was going, I, was, I think I saw a documentary on Pamela Anderson, and she said, well, I didn't have such a great childhood. And I'm thinking, you know, if I had to answer that question, I'd say I had a terrific childhood. Yeah, me too. I'd have to definitely say that. Yeah, what made it terrific? There was a lot of kids. It was the baby boom, so there was a lot of kids to play with. Mm -hmm. How many kids were in your family? Oh, just two brothers. Two brothers, okay. All right. But we had the Sweeneys that had nine kids. Oh, well, that's why they're the Irish. Had, what do you expect? And we had the Freemans that had 12 kids. The Freemans? Right, not Freedmans, Freemans. Freemans, they weren't Jewish then? No. No, because see, Jews don't have large families like that. No, not normally, no. In fact, who was I talking to that said they, they came from a Jewish family where they had like four or five kids, something like that, but you don't hear about Well, his, his Sinem have a lot of kids, and the, and the Orthodox have a lot of kids. Yes, you're right. You're right. But, I mean, normal people like you and I, we only have, like, I didn't have any. But if, Man, I, had, if I had them, I would probably have two, and then I would stop. Right. You know? Right. Uh, whereas uh, the Irish go... Uh, hello, dear. I'm home. Are you pregnant? <laughs> you know, I mean. Right. But right. who was it? I think it was Dean Martin who said the two most uh, biggest phrases were, Hi, honey, I'm home and I'm pregnant. You know, uh, two most common phrases in my family. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I mean, the, but uh, Jew, Jews normally, Jewish are known for having smaller families. When I say smaller, you know, people had, when back in the, 18, late 1800s, they were having like seven, eight kids. Sure. But they didn't have birth control. They didn't have abortion. Well, they had it, but, you know. Right. You don't want to be operated on with a rusty spoon. Right. You know, so, I mean, they just had the kids. And so every time they got pregnant, they, you know, kept the kid and they, it was fine. But, I mean, that's the problem. That's the big problem today. I mean, today we have the abilities to prevent you from having large families. And if you still do, I think you're doing a great disservice to the human race. Because it's, oh, really? Well, it's said that for every child over two that you have, you were starving out some child elsewhere on the planet. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, it's like a balloon. You know, you push one side and the other side bulges out. Uh, right. And, and it... it, it it is a service to mankind if you just have only two kids. Or like me or you, no kids at all. Oh, I know what I was going to go for. I know oh, what I was going to say. Let me not do too much embellishment here. I suddenly, I realized the other day, I've realized this for years, but it suddenly hit me because I'm getting older and the years are coming along, that if I die, which if, when I die, uh, my family name will die with me because I'm Schwarzman, S-C-H-W-A-R-Z-M-A-N-N. -N. Now, there are Schwarzmans around. They're S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z-M-A-N, like a T and one N, okay? But there aren't any Schwarzmans. And if I die, goodbye. That's the last of the, uh, of the Schwarzman clan. Which well, is, when, me, when me and my brothers die, that's the end of the Kravitz clan, at least the Jewish side of the family. Well, wait a minute. Are they? Do they have kids? My younger brother has two kids. One passed away, uh -huh. so he has a, he has a grandchild, uh, but he's not Jewish. What do you mean? And what do you mean he's not Jewish? He's not Jewish. What? Why he he didn't raise him Jewish? What? What? He, no, my my brothers. Ex-wife is a born again Baptist. Oh God! Yeah. And she she raised the kids. So so, my niece and my nephew were Baptist. Oh boy. We're Baptist. Yeah. And then my nephew passed away, 
And he, like I said, he has the, my brother has a grandson, but he was raised Baptist, not Jewish. Yeah, but I'm, I don't think I'm talking so much about maintaining the Jewish part of it, but the name itself will continue. Although I think Kravitz is not an uncommon name. I think there are other people you aren't related to that are named Kravitz or, you know, uh, on this planet. Right. Okay, what I'm saying is when I die, the name dies. You know, doesn't matter. That you know of. That you know of. No. That no. you know of. No, I've looked it up. Every time I go into a town, I will look up Schwartzman's. And it's always with a T and, a, and, a, and one N. There's no Z, no T, and no I. Well, maybe no they change the spelling. No T and, and, and one, two N's. You know, so. Uh, all I'm saying is my name will die. Yeah. I know. I mean, it doesn't. How many Schwarzmans do you know in this world? One. One. Okay. Now I can name another one, but it's with a T and one N. And that's Jason Schwartzman. Oh, okay. Whose father was a producer and was married to Talia Shire. Okay. Uh, but uh, it was uh, it was his name is Jason Schwartzman, but it's with a T and a and a Z and a one N. So every time I see Schwartzman, it's it's. I don't see any Schwarzmans, you know, so. Anyway, I've made my case. I remembered what I was saying. <laughs> I can now I can now go off and die. And take your name with you. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so you say you had a, you had a, you, you had a happy childhood. Oh, yeah. Lots of kids. We got to play outside all the time. Yeah. You know, it was like, your mom was basically her idea of raising kids was to go outside. Well, well, what happened was, you, do you remember when you were growing up? Okay, and and you grew up uh, maybe fifteen years. How how old are you now? Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. So you moved about uh, uh, fifteen years younger than me. Sixteen years younger than me. Right. But in even in your time, sixteen years later, uh, I remember growing up. And it was, I'm going outside to play. Okay, be home for dinner. Right, and right, I, and right. I, same I, thing. I was like nine years old. Same thing. Be home for dinner. Right. Uh, do parents say that to their kids today? No. And they have a GPS on their kids. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, it, I, all I know is that I roamed. I, when I woke up and I had breakfast, it was then my time to do whatever I was gonna go do. Right. And I either go ride my bicycle somewhere and it might be a couple of miles away from my home. You know, but I knew to come back for dinner, you know, right. be back for dinner or you always- We kinda, we kinda stayed in our neighborhood. Well, we, we kinda st stayed in our neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't like your mother told you stay in the neighborhood, you just did. Well, that's where all your friends were. Exactly. You know, so, uh, you know, I mean, I, I had a friend, for instance, who lived all the way across town, and that was maybe like a mile and a half, I mean, because this is the country, this is Marin County, right? Right. And I would bicycle over there, and we'd hang out, and I'd bicycle back, you know. And right. I, and my mother never questioned it for a second. I'd go down to the movies, my mile, at least a mile walk, if I wanted to walk it, and I would go to the movies. We would walk to school. Yes, absolutely. Who did walk to school? You know, now parents drive their kids to school and leave them off and then pick them up. Right. Well, it's a different time. It's a very different time. But, you know, I I it, I think it's kind of sad because I mean, I really Oh, had, it's very sad. I had a very happy childhood because of that. Oh, yeah. And and nobody was like uh uh, you know, making a big deal out of the fact that they're oh, where, where's where's Bennett now where's Bolo that's what they used to call me right and and uh, well you know also there wasn't mass murders going on in in, in high schools there wasn't mass murders well, going on it, in the shopping malls yeah but it, that was a day where you sent your kid to school and the worst thing was going to happen to him is the, a bully would beat him up <laughs> you know? right. I mean, that was it you know, or he'd fall off his bike. He'd fall. You'd fall off your bike, or you'd injure your knee in gym, or something like that. That right. was the worst of it, uh, and nothing else was really going to happen to your kid. 
You didn't hear about many. Did you have any kidnappings that you knew of when you were growing up? Not growing up. One in high school. One in high school. They found her murdered in in, in the snow. Really? Yeah, high school senior. And, and that was probably really tragic at that time. Today, it's like, so what else is new? Right. You know, I mean, it's... It, uh, to be, I would hate to have to be a kid growing up right now, you know. I, th I mean, I would like to because I would live long enough to see us go to Mars and do things like that. But uh, to grow up today is not, uh, you know, it can't be pleasant. Can't be happy. You can't say I had a happy childhood, right? You know, because you went to school every day fearing there'd be somebody with a gun. You have to go through a metal detector. I mean, it's amazing. It's just amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. It's uh, crazy. I mean, I, I I just don't understand it today. Well, I know. and I you, just don't understand it. And do you realize what you just said is what you always said about your parents? Oh, they always say, oh, I, I don't understand these things today. Right. You know, where you didn't say that till you were in your 40s, right? <laughs> because <laughs> up until that time you didn't give a shit right you know uh, my my wife is always this is her most common phrase I hope I don't live long enough and then blah 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 to see this right. happen or to see that happen or whatever but I mean the world that we hand to the kids today I do you think do you think when we were growing up you know we, we, we say look at the, look at the world we've handed kids today but we don't say, um, we've handed the kids this world, uh, but it'll get better. You know, but look at the world we've handed the kids today. Did we, did we say that at any other time in our lives? Did your parents say that? No. Were they, were they unhappy with the world as it was going along at that time? No. You know. See, although, I, although at one point in the 60s, they started to question a lot of things. Well, yes. I mean, there were always terrible times politically, okay? I mean, right. you, you can go back to when I was growing up and you had the, you know, the McCarthy era, that whole thing. Right. And bef before that, I grew up as a pre-World War II kid. The war was just starting. Right. You know, so I grew up knowing, uh, uh, I remember blackouts in San Francisco where the sirens would go off and all the lights in the city would go off. Because that was the idea. Yeah, right. was, the idea was there were enemy planes, and they didn't want to be able to see San Francisco. Oh, see, and if there were no lights on, then they may they might not think there was anything down there. Right. Okay. So I remember we had a couple of blackouts. There were never enemy planes coming over, but we had a couple of blackouts. And I remember my parents turning off the lights, and I looked out the window, and the city was completely dark. Oh wow! Yeah. So, I mean, we had that. I grew up in that. But then, you know, then the war was over. And uh, then we had the McCarthy era. That was pretty terrible. Then after right. that, um, we had the Vietnam, we had the, the Korean conflict was in, somewhat at that time. Then yeah, we my, had, father, my father was in the, uh, in the Air Force during the Korean conflict. Yeah. And then, and then you had the Vietnam War after that. And all that in, uh, entailed, and all the demonstrations and people, you know. And they had the Cold War going on the whole time. Yeah, and all that going on. But I mean, you had these things going on, but they weren't things. They weren't things that affected me as a kid. Okay, but today, what's happening is closer to home. Kids coming to school with guns. You know, now you got to have a, 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 a metal detector. Do you know uh, this is this is interesting? You know, you had that uh, the kid who uh, who shot his teacher, the six year old that shot his teacher. Six year old. Huh. Do you know what they're now doing at that school district? They're making all the kids come to school with transparent backpacks. Hmm. They're all made out of plastic, so they're transparent. You can see everything in them, so they can't carry a gun. Come on, jeez, almighty. 
You know, you're a kid, and now your parent is saying you got to wear this backpack, isn't it? Because so we want to be able to see if any kids have guns. What? Well, what was a six-year-old doing with a gun? Oh well, that's the other question. You know, and and nowhere in the news do I see them saying, "Let's talk to the parents about this." You know, the right. parent the parents are at fault here. The kid had a gun. Where did he get the gun? He probably got it at home, and the parents weren't putting it in a locked safe. And the kid put the gun in his backpack and came to school and shot his teacher. Six years old. Six years old. You know? I mean, uh, I don't remember being six years old. Do you? What's the earliest memory you have? I was little. I don't know how old I was. But I was little, and I was at the supermarket with my mom. Okay. And I stole a pack of gum. That's your first memory in life? I stole, I stole a pack of gum, and I remember consciously thinking, they're not going to bother me. I'm just a little kid. Oh, okay. Did they discover that you got the candy? No. Oh, so you got away with it. Oh, yeah. So did you try it again? Yeah, I got caught eventually. Oh, eventually you got caught. And what did right. you what did you do? You had to go to your room. I had to. I had to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I had to go to my room. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's the first memory you have in life. Because you, I, we don't remember one, two, and three years old, do we? No. I the first memory I have, and this is a very vague memory, is my parents had me at the Russian River. They'd gone to the Russian River. I think my father may have been working up there with a band or something. And uh, we were at a pool. And I, did I go in the pool? Yeah, I think it was the pool or maybe the river. I don't know. But I literally drowned. Uh, you know, I, I've got a lot of water in me. And they had to pump it out of me. Oh, really? And all I remember is this feeling of having bubbles on my face. Hmm. I, I, I still have that memory because it's a shocking memory, all right? Right. And, and I think I may have been four or five at the time, maybe four. And that's my first real memory. But then I don't have that many memories until I get to, I, 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 I get to us living on Telegraph Hill and I'm about seven and so on, you know. I remember my mother having a miscarriage. I remember that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm still an only child. That's why I'm so goddamn spoiled. You know. Um, were you the youngest? Middle. Middle. Oh, okay. Because the youngest really it gets all the love and attention, don't they? And me and my older brother are like 15 months apart. And my younger brother is three years later. Okay. So he was definitely the baby. Yeah. And they pay a lot. My of older brother, my older brother was the golden child because they had lost two before him, mm -hmm. and and then he came along, so he was the golden child. So you're the middle child. I hear there's a middle child syndrome. That being a middle child affects you in a certain way that neither the other two do. Right. How do you think that affected you? Well. I wasn't the golden child, and I wasn't the baby. Yeah, you were. So, just, you were Stephen. I was Stephen. Yeah. Wow. You know, it was like the big joke was uh, Richard looks after uh, my father, and Stuart looks after looks like my mother, and I look like the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, was he Jewish? <laughs> Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, it's, it's really, uh, um, it's amazing how these things affect us for our whole lives. I mean, I'm sure, did you ever go to a psychiatrist? Still do. Still do, okay, on a regular basis. Oh yeah. So this is the kind of thing you talk about, right? Right. Yeah, because you go back, that effect, uh, I mean, if you said you had a happy childhood, then I don't understand all the drug usage later on and what precipitated that, but you probably work that out with your shrink and I'm not gonna ruin the work he's done. Right, you know? right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 
But, uh, you know, I mean, I, I had a very happy childhood. So when this person was saying, oh, uh, you know, I had a happy childhood, I thought about it. I went, yeah, so did I. You know, I can't right. complain about it. My parents were loving and they're caring and, they, you know, they, they treated me well. They treated me with respect. They treated me like we, I was one of them. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, they didn't. They, uh, kids don't come into your life to become part of your life. You know, they become part of this family unit. And a lot of parents uh, don't look at it that way, you know. But anyway, uh, we're lucky. We were lucky. We grew up in, in good households. Yeah, I grew up in a great household. Hey, you know, we run out of time just talking about how wonderful our lives were. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, thank you. You're welcome, yeah, Alex. And we'll do it next week. Bye-bye. Bye, people. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, there we go. Oh, let me turn on the lights here. There we go. I'll do that. I'll, uh, am I, am I, okay. I'm, 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 I, I, I try to bring myself down into the frame a little bit. There we go. Okay. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Hello, how are you? What's happening? We only have one person waiting to talk to us, and he's quality, but, uh, oh, now we have two. We still have one person who's quality. <laughs> I'm so mean. I'm so horrible. I uh, Let me turn up my mic a little bit here. Yeah, okay, there we go. And uh, we're, um, we're ready to, I guess, to, to rock and roll. Okay. Um, let me see here. What are we going to do? Okay. Let me bring in all these people. And then let me turn this on <clears throat> to make sure that that's on. There's Jeff Stein and uh, there's uh, uh, Alan. And, of course, uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello there, Charles. Hi. I guess Jeff is the quality guy. No, yeah, that's what uh, I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> you're, the, you're the quality guy. Uh, let me see here. Oh, here comes uh, Brian Neary. What do you know? A lot of people. Well, not a lot of people, but some people here. He's quality, too. Uh, and Jeff is quality. Hi, Alan. How are you? Speaking of non-quality, mm -hmm. I'm doing good. <laughs> Say it before you do. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, um, um, I got nothing. I got nothing. Anybody have anything they want to talk about? No, not really. Uh, okay. I've been busy training umpires, so I haven't been following. Okay, either. why don't we do this? Why don't we just stare at each other? <laughs> oh, boy. I'm serious. I don't have anything to talk about. I know. Well, what's the... Uh, what's... Uh, Super Bowl. Hey, Super Bowl. Why don't we talk oh, well, that's coming up, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, if you guys want to talk about Super Bowl, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jeff's got light. There we go. Who, who's in the Super Bowl again? I forgot. The Eagles. The, the Chiefs and then the Super Bowl winners, the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> the, <laughs> they better well, win. I, I, I thought the Eagles were from like Arizona or someplace like that. No, no, no. no. Philadelphia. Well, who are the guys that wrote all those songs? <laughs> Did you did you interview them? Never interviewed the Eagles. I don't think I ever interviewed any of them. Wow. Uh, I mean, I may be wrong. Maybe I did, but I don't remember. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that was that was a good three minutes at least. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. That pretty much picks up all the time we have now. You know. Cool. See, I can't. My problem is, I wish I could sign off early, but if I sign off early, uh, 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 Jack wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. You know, so uh, I have to. I have to kind of like sign him off and sign off and have him sign on. Yeah. You know. Pence is being subpoenaed. Yeah, oh. I saw that. He's being subpoenaed uh, on some of the criminal stuff they're looking into. The uh, oh, really? yeah, yeah. Santos got subpoenaed today, passing bad checks in Pennsylvania or something like that in did, 2017. Oh, he, did he, he get brought his act up north? Did he? Wait, wait a minute, I didn't see that. Uh, 
it was on CNN while I was in the middle of dinner tonight. Let's see if I can find it again. Well, I'm sure I can. If I go over to uh, the wonderful Drudge Report. It says Santos charged in 2017 theft over bad checks to dog breeder, breeders in Pennsylvania Amish country. Oh, on top of that, it's the Amish. I see. Uh, let's see here. If we if we go over to our, uh, you won't be able to see this, but our computer, uh, there's a Drudge Report. Let's see. Pence subpoenaed by Trump's special counsel. Okay. But uh, it doesn't say anything here yet about, uh, about what's his name? Wow. About uh, Santos. But I wouldn't be surprised. It doesn't sound like it's impossible. You know. Nope. Anyway. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Huh? It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Oh, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. There's no question about it. So, anyway. Let me see here. Musk Neuralink may have illegally transported pathogens. Uh oh, oh, you got that story. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Oh, that's it. We lost. Uh, what's his name? We lost. Um, oh, Jeff. Oh. Huh? What name? <laughs> oh, we yeah, lost what? Jeff. But no, we, we lost Bert Bacharach. Oh. Oh no, I hadn't seen that. Yeah, but he's like he was like seventy four years old, so it wasn't oh. like he's a you know he's an old right. codger, you know a new codger rather. Wow. Yeah. So I got yeah. another year, huh? Yeah. Florida House gives uh, DeSantis po new power over Disney. What? The Florida House gives DeSantis. Oh, oh DeSantis, him. yeah. I thought the Republicans wanted deregulation. They do. Except no, where we're where, not. Too. Apparently they not. Regulate Disney. Yeah. Yeah. They want to regulate Disney. So what have you. Anyway, so that's uh that's pretty much it for oh, tonight. Oh we got we got a cancer patient on the line. Uh oh. coming from Tony. Oh, Tony. I, oh no, he's now known as the Atomic Man. Exactly. I'm so <laughs> tired from the medicine, I think. And the well, that could, today. that could make you tired. The did the did the, the um, uh, you, you went through that whole Michigas with the uh, excuse me, that's a Jewish term, Tony. The Michigas that uh, had to do with your uh, with the radiation, which you yeah. decided to go with that like eighty days of radiation or whatever. It was the twenty five, yeah. Which yeah, I, I, I couldn't I couldn't do that, you know. They only made me do it for five days. You know, I got the hyper radiation. You got the, yeah. You, Alex, how long were you under the radiation? For, I forgot to ask the doctor. Five, five days. Day. Like when you went in there, like was it like 40 minutes or? It took them about 45 minutes, yeah. See, I don't know if I could have sat that long. I would get a little herky-jerky. Yeah, day. but you could go back for 25 days. <laughs> Well, you know what it was. As soon as I lay down, it was over. Like I kind of like I listened to three yeah, because songs that's and because like, that's the home. that's the lazy kind of radiation. I took the uh, really you took the high impact the primo yeah. the primo the champagne of radiation. <laughs> yeah, that was a, I don't think I could have sat there for forty minutes though. What I loved about the radiation that I got was they would uh, they would they had this thing and the thing would go around. There was this. You opened your eyes. I never did. I mean, you never opened your eyes. Why? Why wouldn't you? I was open your scared. Eyes? I didn't want to see the light. I was off the ground. I kind of. But anyway, it would come. It would come around, and every now and then I'd look at it and go, "Hi, good to see you again." You know, and then it would go around some more, and then yeah, finally, finally, they took the pictures or something and said, "Okay, you're through. Go home." But not the pictures. It's kind of so crazy they how they do it. Like it's so it's so high tech. It's kind of pretty. Cool. I actually found it interesting after a while. Actually, the radiation you had isn't all that high tech. Because the radiation you had is years old. Okay, you had the cyber knife, right? Pretty much. That's what they call it. That's a, that's a uh, that's a trade name. It's a trademark name for a certain company that builds the machine. But it's, it it's really it's called cyber it's called yeah. stereotactic radiation. Okay. Yeah. So. And yeah, like you know, you know, I was going to tell you. I'm hoping for stereophonic radiation. Yeah. Well, I, it was, yeah. Bert Backrack was 94. Yeah, I can't believe he died. Wow. What do you mean you can't believe he, he died? I like his song. Oh, I can't oh, wow. believe I can't believe he died. He was 94. Who would have thought? 
Did he write the way we were or no? Was that no, him? no. That was oh, written okay. by my uh, by an ex girlfriend of mine, uh, um, aunt and uncle. Oh, yeah, okay, because my mother loved that. Yeah, it was written by Just Alan Ber- uh, Alan and Marilyn Bergman, and I went with this woman. I won't say her full name, but her last name was Bergman, and uh, um, it, it's funny because they, they were big songwriters. And I oh, went over good. to her house because she was sick with something. I can't remember what it was, but she was confined to the house. So I went over <clears> to see her, okay? And uh, she's looking through her parents, I don't know, some boxes of her parents. And she oh, says, wow. look, I found some love letters yeah. from oh, my oh, wow. mother, my father to my mother. Oh, wow, that's private. And um, I, she said, look at this one. And I look at it, and it reads... To her, because it was the thing where he proposed to her in a in a in a note, and it said, oh, wow. "What are you doing for the rest of your life?" Yeah, that's the line. Yeah, yeah. And she said, "Yep, they stole it." They did. My <laughs> yeah. mother cried at the end of that movie all the time. Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> but, didn't Bacharach uh, write, write uh, "Do you know the way to San Jose"? Yes, yes. Mm. Oh, he wrote that. Do you know? I can't. You I know. know. I'm My here. sister's upset. She yeah, you're know. there. You know. <laughs> It's like the only thing that this city was known for until Silicon Valley started. Yeah. With that one song. <laughs> yeah, it's everybody. Oh, I know the song. Yeah. You having trouble there, Jeff? Yeah. Why? You look fine. You look great tonight. Yeah, he's got the lights on. Yeah? Can you see me? Yeah. 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 You can't see us. Earlier too. You, I can see oh, I don't see him. Except for me. Except for you. Well, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. We can see you, so don't worry about it. All right. Yeah, yeah. don't worry about Hi, it. Pam. Hi, yeah. Pam. Hi, Pam. Yeah. Hi, Pam. It's 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 a new see, show we're doing called Where uh, Where's Pam? You know. <laughs> oh, there she is. You know. So anyway. Um, He's in charge of the lighting tonight, huh? No, so he, you know, he wrote, oh, you know, the way to San Jose, and he wrote, uh, "Raindrops are falling from my head." I like that one too. And uh, I mean, <coughs> unbelievable. I would say he wrote at least fifty big hits. Yeah. You know. Wow. Yeah. Easy, probably. Yeah, he was amazing. He, uh, you know, and he, and it was good stuff. You know, it wasn't bad stuff. It was really, really. Good material. So anyway, a little cough tonight, so I'm gonna have some of my cough drops. I got my, oh, you got, can oh, I, I tell got you those downstairs too? I got a bag of those. Can yeah. I tell you a little story about this? Now you see what I got here. I got Which what do I? Have? What does it say? The kind it is. Sugar right? free. It's sugar free. Okay. Oh. So that's the only kind we get because the other stuff will rot your teeth. Okay. So Marjorie loves these things because I taught her that if she wants to. To keep her mouth from getting too dry, just take one of these, put it under her tongue, and go to sleep with it under her tongue. And usually that lasts most of the night, and it keeps her her her, her mouth moist. All right. I have other suggestions, but she won't listen to me. Uh, but anyway, so she, she loves these things, and she orders two cases. Oh, oh, man. That'd be like my mother. They'd be hanging out with each other. Two cases. I had them all over the house. Of these things. Two cases of these things. Um, I think it cost her like 90 bucks or something like that. Would you get them from Amazon or? Uh, Let me finish the story, Tony. Oh, sorry. I'm getting like Phil. Sorry. It's the coffee. (laughs) So anyway, so I, um, um, so she she orders them from Amazon and they come and they're non-sugar free. Oh, okay. So she calls up. Uh, she she calls up um, uh, Amazon. Yells and screams as an old lady of her age will. You don't. You won't. Don't want to be working technical support with her on the line. <laughs> and she starts yelling at him and telling him, you know, I want and I want my money back. You know, and send me out or send me out another order. One or the other. Well, we'll send you another order. Okay. What do I do with the order we have? Well, just keep them. Well, what are we going to do with, you know, what is essentially, I guess there may be 24 packages in each box, and there are two yeah. boxes. What are we going to do with this stuff, right? So we figured, ah, what the hell, we'll give it to the people who the, the people who work in the building, you know, the maintenance people, because they pick up the garbage every day, and it was going to be a piece of the garbage. So we put a note on it here, if you want these, they're yours, you know. 
So now she gets a new box of these things. And they come, and we open them up, and guess what? They're the same thing. Oh, They're not oh, sugar-free. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Somebody's going to get fired in Amazon. All right. So now she calls up Amazon again, and she yells and screams at Amazon, "Hey, you know, I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet. and I either want my money back or I want the, I want, I want what I want, you know." And they said, "Well, we'll send you out another order." She says, "What do I do with the ones I've got?" <laughs> well, if you want to keep them, throw them out, do whatever you want to with them. So once again, I leave a note for the guys downstairs. Stairs. Here's some more cough, uh, cough drops. <laughs> Oh my God. So now downstairs, they probably got like over a hundred and fifty bags of, yeah. of, of 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 these things. So cheap. They they say we'll send you we'll send you. It's a third party. We'll have them send you another order of them. So today we get the newest order. Mm. It comes to us, and it's it's in a bag. It's it's weird. It's in a bag, and they're all kind of loose, but they're in there. And we open them up. Guess what? They're not sugar free. Oh my God. Okay. So now she calls them up again and says, you know, th this time you better just send me the right. I mean, she's yelling and screaming and telling them, you know, this is the third. This is this has been three deliveries of these things that have been wrong, right? Meanwhile, uh, our our maintenance people obviously don't have any visible coughs going because uh, they're just taking care of with the <laughs> cough drops. So uh, uh, so, so they finally today said, okay, we'll have them send you out another. I'm mm -hmm. just betting you it's not going to be this. Okay? Something, something's wrong there. Something's, something's, something's wrong. Something's, well, do, it's through a third party. Yeah, there's a part number or something that they keep grabbing the thing that they think it is, and it's not right. Someone well, I told her, I said, you can order <clears throat> like two bags of these things at a time or order, yeah. you know, 10 of them, 10, 10 orders of those, and get it directly from Amazon and not she, this third does she have party. A flavor she likes? Huh? Does she have a flavor? Well, this is the flavor we both like, which is the uh, black cherry. And who, who made them? Ricola? No, this is Hall's. Oh. Hall. Well, what, what if you order a case of the. The non sugar free and see what happens. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Maybe they gather the bins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's just, it, I, I'll tell you, all these companies, I got, there's something I had here. I should read this to you because this is kind of interesting if I can find it. Um, Manufacturing and distributors have that issue all the time. You know, if somebody puts a wrong pallet in the wrong spot and, you know. Yeah. Well, Nobody uses their brain. Last night oh. in the State of the Union, where did, where did that thing go? I had it here a minute ago, a while ago. Um, they, they, in the State of the Union, our president complained about companies and the kind of stuff they're doing now in which they're adding charges to things you buy. Yes. You know, it's like, a, you know, it's like a, something, this fee for that, and a, this fee for that. And I'm trying to find it because they had a whole list of them here. And I've been I, doing it for years. Oh, here, I know where it is. I know where it is. Hold on a second. It's in my... There it is. And here it is. Okay, here's, a, here's some good examples. All right. Hertz charges only $6 a day simply for using a toll transponder in a rental car. Marriott and Hilton add nightly resort fees to the bill even at hotels that nobody would consider to be resorts. Yeah. American Delta and United list one airfare when you search, um, uh, uh, list one airfare when you first search for a seat and then add charges for basic features like the ability to sit next to your spouse. <laughs> Ticketmaster is especially aggressive about imposing fees. Oh, yeah. Uh, you uh, buy two tickets for a football game. This person said they initially selected his seats on Ticketmaster's online stadium map. They cost $48. Uh, the bill at checkout was more than a third higher at sixty-four forty. Yeah. Because they had their little charges. Well, Biden has announced a crackdown on these fees, which oh. the administration calls junk fees. 
No. You know, I could yell and scream, the president has better things to do, and I could say, yes, he does have better things to do, but as long as he's attending to this, I'm happy about it. It affects me as a consumer. Why should you have to pay a resort fee for a hotel that isn't a resort? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up my, uh, oh, when you're done, sorry. That's it. No, go ahead. i I, I got to bring up one of the list of Brian's things that I always say. So the Republicans say that the Biden administration has cut back on Medicare. Mm -hmm. If they want to call lowering, this went through today, if they want to call lowering insulin to no more than $35 per month if you're on Medicare, if they want to call that taking stuff away from Medicare, yeah, they took a, you know. Uh, well, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you're talking about. If, if, you, if you, you, oh, sorry. If you use insulin, yeah. insulin is now on Medicare no more than $35 a month. Yeah, so down. so you, then you will have to pay the rest. No, no. No, that's your... That's, that's your, your payment is 35 35 People were paying hundreds of dollars. Oh, they were. They, 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 yeah, they, no, they had it some places twice. Biden stepped in and said, no, we're not paying any more than this through Medicare. Well, we're Medicare has always... Medicare has always established prices, you know, about what something is worth or not worth, and and that's what the doctor can charge for it, you know. Right, uh, but the Republicans, namely Rick Scott of Florida, but, says yeah. that we ought to that we ought to cancel Medicare. Yeah. Yeah, and the que I, the question I have for him is, why? Because you know? he's just, nobody, it's out of control, according to him. He was on the news earlier. What's out of control? You know, nobody nobody uh, checks to see if they're uh, getting good prices on anything or not. What do you, um, well, I thought they won't let them negotiate. Right. <laughs> they don't want to negotiate. The Republicans think they ought to vote for it every year. Every year. And re-vote. Look, look, at, look at how they're trying to trap us on not raising the budget and screwing over the country and everything, you know, the Republicans, I can imagine every year them trying to approve or not approve Medicare. Yeah, they would hold that over our head. Yep, absolutely. You know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, I was talking to Shecky Alex one time and, and I have to agree when I first started listening to your show that it never made any, any sense to me. How can we not have just all universal health care? Like, we should just have it. You shouldn't have to worry about losing money. Nobody in this country should sick. have to worry about paying for their medical care. Yeah, like if including, I'm sick, you have to worry including, about right including the amount that is taken out of your Social Security to pay for you to have Medicare. I mean, that's what we don't talk about. Why I'm paying what something like almost two hundred dollars a month or something yeah. out of my Social Security yeah, to I'm have Medicare, it. and then it only takes care of eighty percent. Yeah, and you shouldn't have to have that donor hall of 20%. And I know what some of you people out there are saying, you right-wing assholes. Uh, if you are watching this program, which you probably aren't because you're a right-wing asshole, uh, 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 that, no. that, you know, everybody in America should have their medical care taken care of. That, really you know, as, yeah. That's why we pay taxes. Yes, yeah. that's why we pay taxes. I don't mind paying taxes for uninsured people to get you know with Obamacare I was happy when that went through most of my Republican friends oh no it's gonna cost us more money well you know basic medical ought to be provided to every US citizen there should be you should walk into a hospital get the best possible medical care for what's wrong with you and then when you walk out nobody's there with their hand out saying well show us your uh, insurance card or here's That's how right. much money you owe us or they send you some kind of god awful bill for the amount yep. that you owe it shouldn't be yep. um, um, americans being well is an asset to the country you would think okay? right you would think it's almost like yeah. it's and you know what i don't get either it's like i don't really think it's a democrat republican anymore i just think it's almost like it's, it seems like somewhere or another in the last 30 years or say whatever since – I would say since Clinton got in because he actually wanted to correct it. It seems like something went off its axis where they were – they they could have solved this problem, but mm -hmm. they choose not to. Maybe because they're in the pockets, some of these politicians, of the there, pharmacists. There, there's too much money. Yeah. There's too much money. Too, too, the, America, America, has become, 
America has become too greedy, and when people see opportunity for money, they're gonna they're gonna take you know, it. That, yeah. That's funny you said that, Brian. Listen to this, Alex. I'll never forget this. I was gonna. I don't know if I told you guys this. When my mother went on, uh, what is it, Medicare, right? When she uh, retired. Mm -hmm. Do you know the dentist she always went to, right? The same dentist I go to and my sister. When she went on, Alex, she was, and she was going to use that to go. You know, I was taking her there to, you know, do a teeth cleaning. He says, "Oh, I don't take uh, the yeah, Medicare." Dent, dent, wait a minute, hold dent. on. But to begin with, dentists do not take Medicare. That's I mean, right. what is it? What, what was the insurance she got? What do they call that again? When they, uh, no, they did have a supplemental plan that she was on. That they it was it okay. wasn't supplemental. What she probably had was Advantage, maybe. Maybe she did. She had something where he wouldn't take when she changed over to it. And I got mad oh, at the guy. Then, then he, he tell the you tell the dentist to go screw himself and go to a doctor. That's he a, does you know, take it. Oh. I was pissed because you know what I said. I said to him very nicely because I was still going there. I said, "Wait a second. My mom worked for ANS all these years. She's been coming here for twenty years, and now." You're not gonna take her. He says, "Well, not right now." It's all about. I, I was like, "What a dick!" Yeah, and that was before you had a cup of coffee that day. Yeah, and you know that. You know, Alan, that really <laughs> pissed me because I've said to myself, I "The guy who it's like, it's like." Well, that it, be you know, it, the, it, it, the 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 thing that the Republicans don't understand, or they don't want to understand, is that if you have a an, an America that's well. Okay, and its medical needs are taken care of. You're going to have better productivity. You're going to have better efficiency in the country. You're going to have a better run country. When you just put people out to, to die, basically, by not covering them with any kind of medical care. And some of them are underinsured, too, from the companies, too. Some of these companies don't even want to give insurance. Can I, I, can I just talk here, Tony? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Is it okay with you? It's all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, I was just made at a dentist. No, what I was going to say is, is that it, it's just that all medical should be because it is your health. It, it is the thing that keeps people alive. If you don't have, see, in this country, folks, think about it. If you don't have medical insurance, okay, which a vast majority of Americans can't afford. I mean, look at the price of medical insurance. Look at what Alan's saying. Huh? Yeah, Ob Obamacare changed a lot of that. He's they, right, no, they, they did. didn't change it that much. I often felt that Obamacare was kind of a kind of a band-aid on a big wound. You know, it didn't really solve the problem. What we needed was what he wanted, what all of us wanted, which was single payer. In other words, you get sick, you go to the no doc, doctors do not send you a bill. Okay, they send the government a bill. All right. So when you went to emergency, Alex, for your food poisoning incident or whatever, how quick did they take you in? They took me in pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Think about before 2014 when Obamacare went in. And during the during the cold and flu season, uh, how, all these people that were uninsured were sitting in emergency. Yeah. Well, and, hold on a second. Uh, I will say that the reason yeah. I got taken care of so well in emergency was I arrived in an ambulance. Oh, okay. okay. So immediately I went to the front of the line. You know, they had to find okay. somewhere to put that gurney, you know. Right. And and uh, so, I mean, that's that's what happened with me. I think if I had just d driven over and went and sat there, I would have been there waiting forever. No, yeah. not with Obamacare. With Obamacare, it allows people that are poor and uh, under employed and stuff it allows them to buy basic health insurance so they're not sitting there for colds and flus they can call their regular doctor and diabetes is a lot better under control because he's i think you might have a good point on that well i'll tell you the whole medical profession um needs to be taken care of okay absolutely i mean there there are there's a there's a big problem i got a flash on my screen here what's my screen it was like? jeff's pacemaker short now <laughs> <laughs> did that the other night too. I don't Let's know why. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Anyway, um, I, I, um, I it, the, just the the nature of just seeing a doctor. If I want to see a, let's say I want to see a doctor. Let's say I want to mm -hmm. see a pulmonologist. All right, got a couple of spots on the lungs here. They probably should just be checked out. Nothing. They're nothing that's going to become cancerous. But 
let's say I want to see the pulmonologist. Well, Marjorie wanted to see a pulmonologist, and she made an appointment to see the pulmonologist. How far in advance do you think she got the appointment? Three weeks? Try two months. Two months? Yeah. He's got a I mean, you could be... And, and the pulmonologist Ooh. said the reason is so many people are coming to me because of COVID right. that I've got a backlog. Well, uh, if I want to go see my uh, my internist, my general practitioner, the guy who just takes care of my general stuff, uh, I've got to wait a month before well, I can I see him. Week. You know, this has got to end. You know, if I've got a, if I got Sorry. something wrong with me right now, I'd like to have you take care of me right yeah. now. You know, yep. and yep. I, how many people are dying because of lack of medical help? either because they don't have insurance or because the doctors are full up or because some of them don't take Medicare, you know. A lot, a lot more people are living because of Obamacare. I don't think Obamacare was, was the answer. I think Obamacare was the compromise. It was the compromise. It was the Isn't that by state, though, Alan? I think Obamacare, is it up by state? No. Federal law, but some states enforce it and some states don't, which is like Texas. I don't, is it in Texas, Charlie? I don't think so, right? Yeah, we have Obamacare, but they oh, don't got... have the Medicaid expansion. So there's oh, okay, like 3 million nice. Texans that could have health insurance that don't. Right. Medicaid See, is for people who are under a certain level financially, right? You're in this bubble between... Uh, if you're poor enough, you can get on, on Medicaid anyway. And then if you make too much money, mm -hmm. then you can't afford, I mean, you can't get on Medicaid, but you can't, you don't make enough money to afford your own private health insurance. So okay. there goes hmm. 3 million Texans that have no insurance. So, wow. I mean, and, and I just think that uh, uh, this is something we got to do away with because to begin with, I'd like to have them do away with it and just have single payer and, uh, you know, uh, uh, where the government takes care of your needs and not allow insurance companies to make the kind of money they're making. Exactly. I mean, I'm paying, well, my, not me, but Marjorie's company until next year when we have to do it ourselves, are paying about $320 a month for our supplemental insurance. Well, that shouldn't even exist to begin with. It should just all be Medicare, okay? Yeah, they and that's it, you know? And um, you want a good plan? Look at the plan England has. Yeah, they pay less than half of what we pay for health insurance yeah. yeah. per person. Yeah, so there's a name I don't know here, Paul Pollard. Uh-oh. Do it on me. Yeah. I'm, you know. It's uh, Representative Santos. Yeah, right. So, I mean, we've got to do something about that. It's just, it, it's ridiculous. And uh, uh, why the Republicans, the Republicans want, would like to do away with uh, a lot of them with uh, Social Security. Right. Now, right. I got news for you, pal. I've been paying into Social Security all these years. Absolutely. You owe me that money. Absolutely. Okay. You want to see a riot on the Capitol, vote oh, out. Oh, yeah. Social Security. <laughs> oh, all those old folk be and out. that actually be rightfully so if they were. Well, I you mean, know? come on. All your life, you pay into Social Security, yeah. and when you reach a certain maturity, if you even live that long, I was going to say, if you make it, yeah. if you live that long, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you're supposed to get some money from the government, which isn't a hell of a lot, but it's it's something, you know. Yep. Yep. So I mean, it, it's horrible. It's just horrible, and it's horrible the way we treat our own people. And yet, it's those very people that say, "Well, I don't like what Biden's doing, and I don't like Social Security because it's 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 uh, socialism." Well, Bullshit. I got news for you: some socialism is a very good idea you because know what it what that? it doesn't allow is doesn't allow insurance companies to fleece the crap out of you. What? And what's funny to say when they say socialism? And when, but when we had the pandemic, they were lining up for the PPD money. Yeah, yeah. Phil was there. Saying, Phil was there. He's the head of the head of the line. Pay, pay back. Huh? What? They took the PPD money. The businesses. They didn't. Oh, yeah. They didn't Phil, have to pay it Phil back. took it all. Yep. Yeah. And 
You know? I mean, I can understand why they took it because they wanted to keep himself afloat. But then you can't have it the other way, saying Phil could have kept Phil could have kept himself afloat without the PPP money. Absolutely. You know. But you're right. I mean, they're all going, "Oh, give me my money. I'm all for that." But I'm against socialism. Yeah, but what? I'm against that. That's really? The poor guy is bread. You're against socialism? Yeah. What do you think you just it's, took? Yeah, yeah. It's socialism. Yeah. So anyway, oh, is he gone? Oh, thank God. Yeah, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. I haven't sent him coffee in months. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, oh, this guy. Oh, shit, he's back. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, you, uh, uh, funny though, Alex. Oh, no way. Like, it's like the people, and I really believe this. I don't really like to count anybody's money, but can somebody with some, some dick pics people, please call up here? Yeah, I know, uh, the yeah. coffee's kicking in, really, I think. No, but you know what it is? Oops. It's almost like the people who have money, some of them, they feel like they work the system, too. And it's like, but it's, I think it's just more than greed. It's almost like, well, I have money. Yeah, but sometimes it's also by luck that you got money, too. It isn't like, you know, you know there's a lot of things involved. Hey, in some it. people you know, are so, lucky, you know? you know, they have it, and uh, they, they've been blessed, uh, you know. With the you know with with having money, and that's uh, that's fine you know. But I mean, come on. Where I'm where I'm trying to find my thing here. Where is it? The thing to mute Tony. No, I'm. You should mute Alan. I'm coming out there, and she'll probably go. Really? What? Yep. He he's been threatening that for a year. I know. No, so I'm coming. We're gonna cancel August in California. In July or August? My sister's coming. I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Where's the uh, Where's the thing? What, where is it? Well, I don't know. I give up. Oh, I have to ask you a question when you get a chance. What? We uh, you, oh, you have. Oh, you Did have they a, give you? Hmm? You know what I was going to ask you, Alex? I, I, I asked this to Shecky. He wasn't sure. Did you get a card from the uh, oncologist just in case you set the alarm off at the airport? Oh no. He gave me one. I could set. It's. I may if I go past like. Uh, it's like for so many months that I'm radiating, mm -hmm. I have a card that says, just in case I set the thing off, I have to show it to them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, there's not much chance you're going to fly, so they're okay. No, but I'll be part <laughs> I'm coming, I'm telling you. <laughs> Let me see here. I can't figure out where I'm... I'm going to come. They're going to be all hiding. Where's everybody? <laughs> they're gone. I'm trying to find something here. Here comes here. Tony. Keep him away from the coffee stores. Yeah, you'll know where I am. I'll be in Pete's Coffee House. There he is. He's in there. Let me see here. Let me. I, I thought they didn't have Pete's Coffee in New York. No, they don't. I found it in San Fran when I went out there. Yeah. Well, it's oh, I can buy it in the supermarket though. They have it in the supermarket. Oh, good. Save me some yeah. money. Wait a minute. I let, I let Kevin. Oh, there's Kevin. Okay. Kevin's um, here. Yeah. We just have a lower view of him tonight. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying. I'm just trying Kevin's to figure out there. where uh, where I'm. Or is that down in his office? I don't know. We haven't heard from Charlene. I wonder if she's okay. I get a thing from her every now and then. A little email from yeah, her. Yeah, she posts on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Cool. She calls when she wants to. Uh, Jeff, you're down in uh, Florida, right? I am. Uh huh. Nice and warm. Oh, how is it down there? He hates Florida. Yeah. Oh, is it 80? Oh, it's nice. Eight. Okay. Today. Why don't you move out of Connecticut and move to Florida? I like Connecticut. I mean, isn't that where all Jews retire? Why <laughs> yeah, that's what retire? Snowbirds. That's what the, the story is. But you know, I've got kids and kids. I, I don't really have. I don't really have problem with uh, with the cold. Uh, I like Jeff, it. And I, and I, 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 let me give you a little clue. Good idea. Just never leave the house. <laughs> You're like me. I go to post office and come back. I it's like I'm in Florida all the time, <laughs> and I don't even have to fly or put up with Florida. You this want it hot on there? I do. Kind of radiated on it. <laughs> Tony, shut up for five minutes. You should mute. Can you mute me, please? Be happy oh, to. Mute him. Yeah, I'm going to get another cup of coffee. Here we go. I'm I'm went to a cup of coffee. coffee. Yeah, I just muted him. What were you going to say, as Jeff? When I went to Australia yeah. one time. Oh, for I was coffee. there for a month or so. And I needed medications because the ones I was running out. So I said to somebody there, I said, what do I do about that? What do I go to? Go to the hospital. So I go to the hospital. I show them the pills I got. I show them my 
business cards and, and my medical cards. And they said, <coughs> here's your new pills for another month. And that was down in Australia, you say? Yeah, Sydney. Yeah, if you get sick in England. And it was like yeah. a no-brainer. If you get sick uh -huh. in England, they'll take care of you, even yeah. if you're an American. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. We just we're 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 a heartless country, you know. We and we have no Sweden, heart. Hmm? What? When I, when I go to Sweden, like one lady was pregnant, they get like six months off paid and like some crazy, and even the men or something like that. But yeah, they get some crazy. The men are oh, pregnant. Yeah, leave maternity leave or whatever. Yeah. yeah. When they have a baby, they get at least six months off. Well, you know, I got, a year. I got to yeah. say this, and this is a good. <clears throat> good way we could solve the problem of uh, taking care of a lot of these things. Let's cut the military budget by 50%. And people are going, oh, we need the, the military protects us. Yeah, but at what cost? Over 50% of every dollar you pay in taxes goes to the military. Whereas in any other civilized country in the world, the highest amount that goes to the, uh, to the military is 10%. Yeah. What, what, why have we got so much military? Are we that hated that we have to defend ourselves that vi vigilantly yeah. because everybody's out to get us? No. The world. Sweden is 480 days for the man and the woman. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's that's almost a year, or yeah. no, sorry, it's over a year. That's over a year for mater yeah. maternity leave. I knew it was crazy because they were telling me I was like, "Wow, wow, yeah, sixteen months." <clears throat> well, I mean, we'd be able to do stuff like that here if we just weren't paying so much to our military. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and and what good does it get us? Half the a uh, ninety nine percent, I think, of all the weapons that we have sitting there in in warehouses and so on will go stale before they're ever yeah. used. And then they just gotta buy more. That's place. right. So, you know, we may as well give them away to Ukraine, you know, because we're not gonna use them. So we can make more. Oh, you know what we need our missiles for? So we can shoot down weather balloons. <laughs> <laughs> this weather this just balloons. gets crazier and crazier every day. The government, our government, trying to justify the shooting down of that balloon is trying to say that it was spying on uh, telephone calls and uh, radio signals and so on. And I'm going, so you, what? So really? what? So what? Plus, and then they. Then you have people ripping Biden because he didn't shoot it down fast enough. And, it's and, like, and, and they, sh they shot it down once it got over water on the other side of the country. So it was mm -hmm. about ready to leave the United States. So why the hell didn't you just let it go? Let him go spy on <laughs> England, okay? You know, but I mean, it, 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 to begin with, and I said this last night, you think about them spying. What are they spying on? You know? I can't no, no. figure that one out because you know, they, the, the president of China. they say, oh, well, they're going over nuclear plants and things like that. Listen, folks, the Chinese have their own space station, okay? And they can look right down at any nuclear place we've got in the United yep. States and take a lot of photographs of it, and they don't need no fucking rubber balloon that says Gungay Fa Choi on the other side, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's Tony. Go ahead and talk, talk to us, Tony. You're muted, but we're going to keep you muted. No, no, no. He didn't get to talk. They, <laughs> you know. There you go. It's mine, Everybody ladies and gentlemen. Everybody just nod your head like you hear them. Hmm? <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. Absolutely, Tony. Right, right, right. <laughs> I agree, Tony. Right on. Anyway. I can't, find, I can't find it now, but they had a really good meme. You know how it was really big white, and they had that like little long, yeah. long thing. I don't even know what that was. I think that was the that was the electronics. electronics. Okay, okay. They had a meme of of Trump playing tennis, and he's bent over in those white shorts. Remember that picture? He's playing mm -hmm. tennis, and he's got big ass white shorts, and his big ass is there, and they put that little thing underneath. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, uh oh! I said Republican, and he said Trump. Uh oh. 
That's a good one. Yeah, but it, you know, it 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 really is. Uh, uh, it really was really quite stupid, to tell you the truth. And the fact that they want to hold a congressional hearing on it. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, go ahead, waste our time. Why don't you hold a congressional hearing on oh health insurance? How about that? You know. Why don't you do it in something productive? Well, the Chinese, are, they got this balloon. To begin with, there was no way they could control where that balloon was going to go. It just followed the trade winds. Okay? Yeah, yeah there's no fan on there. It wasn't like they could say, okay, we want you to go over this uh, missile silo in Kansas, right? You know, and take a look at it because uh, the, it, it just had to go anywhere the wind blows, as it were. And and it was just it's insane. It's just well, insane. Trump, Trump made comments like they should have shot it down over the continental United States. Of course, there were three documented cases of balloons going over us, and Trump never fired at them. That's right. The same exact balloons, by the way. Yeah. And he yeah, knew made, he knew about made, them. made in China. <laughs> yes, of course. And uh, a couple of them though were in the shape of doggies, which was really really cute. And, and one of them yeah. took a shit on his lawn. No. Yeah, right. Yeah, but anyway, where were we? Oh, so that oh, there, it is. Huh? there it is. Right, Russian spy balloon. Put it closer. Put it close. <laughs> put it closer. Put it closer to your. Uh, yeah, there we go. Russian right. spy balloon. <laughs> oh my god! You I know, know, I mean, it's just it. T to me, that's the most ridiculous story of the week, and the fact that our government is trying to justify. That they shot it down. They spent how much this balloon worth? Okay, I, 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 how much could that balloon possibly have cost? A lot. It had three bus loads full of electronic equipment spying on us. So three, really? three oh, bus loads. Yeah. I don't that was think a that, lot of helium. I don't think the that size was, of three buses. Yeah. What, the size do you, of you know bus? what they did? They shot it down. With a six hundred thousand dollar missile, good, it worked. When they could have just taken, uh, put their, gone past it with their guns blazing and shot the thing down. Maybe. And you know how much bullets cost? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I the mean, helium Yeah. That's. But I mean, I, on the other hand, the fact that Republicans are, oh, you should have shot it down faster, and or, you know. Oh, he, if they'd done it over Montana, all you're going to kill are a couple of cows and prairie dogs. Right. Well, you don't know that it isn't going to land on uh, a school, you know? No, you know and, 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 they, and they were worried, I think, about that <clears throat> payload more than they were worried about the balloon itself. Oh, absolutely. But, I mean, so what? If, if it shot down everything it was going to shoot down, you know, if, it, if, if it went over everything that it went over and only got shot down when it was leaving the United States, then it already sent signals back to China of whatever pictures it was taking. So, I they mean... Just want, they huh? wanted to do forensics on it. They, huh? Huh? That's what they were doing was forensics on it. They wanted to see what they were doing and, and, and analyze the crap, you know, the stuff that they were using. And do you, think, we, they, you think we'll ever get an honest answer about what it was doing? Hell, hell no. Uh, no. No, they're going to do everything they can justify for spending, you know, $600,000 on the mi missile and shooting the goddamn thing down. Well, the, and, and the only reason that it was shot down is because someone saw it. If no one saw it, it wouldn't have got shot down. It would have floated over, and nobody would have doesn't done anything. They saw it. Where, like, they, yeah, they, but then where would it go? It, it still has no control. So things just kind right. of wander around. Yeah, we just flip it over to wherever the next cut. They saw it. They <laughs> made a big. I uh, somebody saw it, and uh, they made a big deal out of it. They showed it on television. Okay, and then everybody yeah. went, well, "What is this?" Well, we always knew what they were. They're, as you say, there were three of them, I think, during the Trump administration, none of which were ever shot down. We no, knew what they were saw. then. And the only reason why I think they did something about this is because the public was saying, aren't you going to shoot that thing down? Correct. Yeah. That's the, the only ones, reason. Yeah, the ones during the Trump administration all said, happy birthday, Donald, so they didn't want to shoot Yeah, him right, down. exactly, exactly. Well, they, you know, they were from China. China loves him. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, isn't this it's a wonderful? Isn't this a crappy country right now? It's just I really, so. you know. I I, I wanted to, I was going to say to Marjorie tonight, but then I I realized I already knew the answer to it. I said, 
Do you wish you had been born in some other country? Now, I would ask that question of, of you guys. Uh, Charlie, are you, would you much rather have been born in another country? I'd rather have been born in a country that had universal health care. Okay. How about you, closest, Alan? Closest one. It, I agree. Closest one, I think, is Canada. Yeah. 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 How about you, uh, Brian? Uh, Italy. I like Italy. I wish I would have moved there a long time. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Char, uh, 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 Tony. He's <laughs> still muted. Mm. Oh yeah, I agree. Oh wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me let me ask him to unmute here. Hold on. He said Russia. Read lips. Huh? He said China because he likes the Chinese food. Well, I do yeah. like the China. Oh, I love my China. I do love China. I had egg drop the other yeah, day. Yeah, well, just so order good. it the way you order it here in China and. <laughs> I, and they'll put you up. I, against, I, I, I like put you up against the wall. wall and shoot you behind your head. Exactly. And you notice they never, they never. I love watching them cook in the Chinese restaurant too when they they do it so fast. Okay, he asked you a question. Simple. Oh, question. I, I can't leave the United States. I love New. Okay, cut okay, That's all we need. That's all we need. Uh, uh, Jeff, any place where Tony's not going to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, how about Kevin? Kevin? Uh, perfectly fine here. Yeah. Uh, well, my answer was <clears throat> I was I thought about the question and then I I said to Marjorie yeah, I thought to myself and then I thought well, I'm not going to ask Marjorie because it's a simple, stupid question. When I was born, it was just prior to World War II. If I say wanted to live in England. Oh, or 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 Italy, or Spain, or any of those countries. I mean, I'm Jewish. Yeah, you know, uh, of course, no, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> not at all. But if I was born later, I think I would have wanted to be born in another country. I think I think uh, any country that had a decent kind of a decent socialism, but not so much because of socialism but because they care about their people. Mm -hmm. And they care about the government caring about the people. And uh, I just don't think this country cares about people. And I also don't feel as a Jew that I've lived in a particularly non-anti-Semitic country. You know, I mean, for the longest time, you know, when I was growing up in this country, it was all about uh, having, being, uh, you know, living in Christianity. Everything was Christianity this and Christianity that, and um, being Jewish kind of made you an outsider. Um, since we're not as religious a country anymore, it's changed. But still, to this day, don't we constantly, don't they constantly make a big deal about the fact that, you know, this is a, this is a Christian country? No, it's not. Not anymore. That's for goddamn sure. You know. Goddamn sure. But you know, we don't live in those other countries, and I and I know that 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 same div undiversity exists in those other countries as well. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of it from Europe. Those those things exist in other places too. So it's mm -hmm. not like we're the only ones. It just we're noisier about it, and yeah. we know about it here. Yeah. I mean, you go to England, and they don't like black people they don't like jews they don't like you know it's the same thing well they um, no black people they're okay with kind of in england it's uh, it's indians indians they don't yeah. like so i don't know but like you, you see that. the soccer matches the soccer matches they the, the guys who have like the black guys are their stars the the opponents they'll throw bananas out on the field i mean it's really yeah, bad I mean, they're, they they have their their issues as well i mean it's no but they just want we, them to slip we, on the peels <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, they, they're by, really bad. By the way, uh, um, uh, Kevin, do you have a cold tonight? No, I'm I'm in Arizona, so there's a little there's a lot of uh, pollen out here right now. There's there, mm. there's a lot of wind the last couple of days. Oh, okay, so, so you're okay, so you're in a, you're in Arizona. Oh, okay. Forty yeah. ers didn't make the Super Bowl, Kevin. So I don't know if you, <laughs> I was waiting. Planned, for I would have bought your ticket from you. Yeah, I'm out here oh. trying to. To ask you about I'm sabotage problems. The <laughs> right now in New York, 
Talk a little louder, will you, Jeff? Can you? Sure. Yeah. A lot of people in New York now are concerned about taking their kids to Hebrew school mm-hmm. because people are coming in there and blowing the place up and shooting mm-hmm. guns and same kind of stuff that yeah. that Phil was yeah. talking about in San Francisco. It's going on in New York now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Terrible. Well, I mean, it, it uh, you know, there's a lot of anti-Semitism right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't know why all of a sudden it, it reared its ugly head. Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. There well, we go. Well, he supposedly was a friend of Israel. What's his name? Netanyahu loves him. <laughs> you know? no yeah, but that has nothing to do with Jewish. That has to do with being right wing. <laughs> That's right, a racist. He what did you say, him. Tony? I couldn't hear you. Yeah, right on, Tony. We agree. Very yeah. nicely. Have yeah. some more coffee, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's become the Marcel Marceau of our show. Yeah. yeah. That's good. So somebody just told me that that uh, you should go to Portugal uh, for a vacation because the American dollars is very, very strong as compared to them. Yeah, and and otherwise, uh, they're very nice people. Are you going there next week? Great food. This week, Florida. Next week, Portugal. That's it. Yeah. So I well, know. I'll tell you uh, another great place. I love Spain. Just love yeah. Spain. Yeah, my friend just moved there. He he, but his friend from work, and then he took like the last two years and just traveled all around the world, mm-hmm. and and uh vietnam you went to a bunch of places and then he came back here sold all his stuff and then he's moving to spain he wow. or he moved he moved about two months ago he just what's happening yeah yeah no uh, spain is uh, i i found it to be lovely and i found the people to be lovely you know and uh it's you know it, 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 it but i i you know i at, at this point i mean i i I often thought, even when I was younger, about moving out of the country. But the only problem is, in any country I would move to, uh, I don't speak the language. And if I don't speak the language, I can't do radio shows. You know? So, I mean, uh, and, and if I were to learn the language, I would speak it probably with a terrible accent. And so I still couldn't work radio. Right? So this was really the only place I could work. This or maybe England. Okay? You know? But that's it. Israel. Israel, uh, they, they, they prefer you speak Hebrew there, you know. And uh, the only Hebrew I know is how I cheated it when I had my bar mitzvah, and that was about it, you know. You're not the only one. Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you, he, 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 my, my rap, I kept whispering in my ear what the words were. They, they, well, yeah. they changed my part of the Torah. Yeah. They had the wrong part, and I couldn't read it. Well, and so he canceled my bar mitzvah. Well, well no, what they did to me is that because I couldn't read the Hebrew, they just gave me a bas mitzvah instead. So. <laughs> that sounds funny, but I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a girl. <laughs> yeah right. The bas That's mitzvah right. is what they gave girls. Right. But girls, oh. girls never got a bar mitzvah anyway because they were girls. But at some point, they didn't want to leave the girls out. So some of these places, some of these neighborhoods and congregations would hold bat mitzvahs. But basically, I don't think there ever was such a thing years ago. You know. Well, you, the Bible only talks about men and bar mitzvahs, so. Yeah. Here's a joke. Here's a Jewish joke for you. Today I am a fountain pen. <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about, Jeff? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't get it, do you, Brian? That's hysterical. (laughs) No, it's just they give you nothing but fountain pens when you have a bar mitzvah. And so you say, today I am a fountain pen. Instead of today I am a man. I got got a lot of checks. I don't know what they were written with, a a fountain pen or a regular pen. But I mean, my my grandparents said, we'll never go to another bar mitzvah in this family. So, you know, they gave me $50,000. Okay. Hey, listen, I got to go. I want to say goodbye to Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, uh, uh, Alan. Thank you to Brian. Thank you, Tony. Want to say goodbye to everybody? Bye-bye, Tony. Yes. 
Jeff, thank you very much. And, uh, of course, um, Kevin, thank you. Enjoy yourself in, uh, in Arizona. Anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. And that's our citizen panel for tonight, folks. There they go. Okay. Uh, that's it. Uh, there, uh, we'll have Jack Bishop next over most of this same station. He'll be doing the intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bent. I'll see you tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Good night.